In this video, we will see how the installation of Red Hat's Process Automation Manager and Decision Manager has got simplified with the usage of operators on the OpenShift platform. To start with, let's create a new project. Let me name the new project as 01BA Demo. Let's create the project. Once the project is created, let's go to the Operator Hub. And in the Operator Hub, we will find the business automation operator provided by Red Hat. So once you select the operator, uh, we can see the operator 130 is available for installation and that's provided by Red Hat. So click on install and the operator will get installed into the specified namespace of the project that we had created just now. And we will leave the update channel uh, to be stable and the approval strategy as automatic so that the updates that would be provided would get installed automatically onto this particular operator. So let's hit subscribe. And once the subscription is done, we will see that the operator is getting installed. And let's go into the operator and see the status of the operator. And we can see that it's still getting installed. And finally, it has got installed successfully without any errors. Now what happens with this installation of the operator is that it basically creates two different pods into the OpenShift cluster and these pods are responsible for the execution of the custom resources that we will be providing in the next set, next set of steps. Alright, so let's go back to the installed operators and the business automation operator is ready for use now and the API that is provided by the business op automation operator is called the key app. So once again let's go into the operator and this API helps us with the creation of the process automation manager or the decision manager environments. So let's go to the key app and create a key app. Now there are a few options here to create uh, the custom resource definitions. So one is this option where it it provides an option to create or define the YAML that's going to be used for the creation of the key app. Or the other option is if you go back to the operator overview screen, we have an install installer that provides a guided way of installing the key apps. So let's use the installer uh, first to, to do the installation of a key app. So on opening this up, a new tab comes up. Let's accept the security warnings and let's allow the selected permissions. And once we do that, we get the installer wizard. And in this wizard, we can specify the name of the application let's say we want to create both the business central as well as the key server and uh, we're going to use the authoring environment for doing that so let's select the environment as rhpam authoring so these are the different types of environments that are available as i mentioned earlier uh, the environments for the decision manager as well as the process automation manager are available here so let's choose the rhpam authoring environment and Let's leave all the other fields as such because we're going to use and we're not going to use any custom registry here and uh, we can specify the admin user that has to be used. So let's name it as admin and let's move on to the next screen and here it provides the options using which we can specify the security credentials. So what is the type of the authentication that we wanted to enable for this RHPAM setup? Uh, are we interested in using the Red Hat's SSO or we are trying to connect to the LDAP system or we just want to use the internal authentication mode? So for this demonstration, we will use the internal authentication mode and the different sets of uh, credentials that are required for the controller user as well as the key server um, user IDs, the controller user as well as the execution users 
and the other credentials that might be required if in case you want to do a high availability setup so for now we can leave all of these as default and go on to the next screen um, so this is where we can specify the additional uh, configuration details for the console so if we want to specify a specific secret that has to be used uh, for the key store so we can specify that here the number of replicas for the console component so this is the business central um, key store that we wanted to specify we can specify here as well as the number of replicas so I'm leaving it as default for now and similarly the resource request so what, what is the minimum uh, amount of memory that is required for this particular container that's going to host the business central the CPU and so on and so forth the max limits as well uh, and finally the SSO client details if in case we are interested in using the Red Hat SSO for the authentication purposes for now I'm leaving this also as default and the next screen provides an opportunity to add new key servers if in case we would like to have more than one key server for this particular setup so for now we don't need uh, any new key servers so we can go on to the next step and the next screen provides an opportunity to define the smart router so if in case we need a smart router to be part of this setup we can specify the configuration details by clicking on this set smart router but for now this is not required so I'm moving on to the next option and finally this this is the last step so we can just go ahead and click on deploy and what happens here is this triggers the deployment of the key app that we had defined so let's go to the key app tab and we can see the status of the installation so what's happening here so let's go to the pods and see if the deployment has started so the deployment has not started and that's because I think the images are not yet available um, so let's create a secret so that that can be used to pull the required um, images from the Red Hat registry okay so the secret seems to be already existing Sorry. let me change the project I think I'm in a different project zero one all right let me create the secret here so once the secret is created let me switch back and see if the images are available so let's go to the bills image streams alright so the images are not yet available so let's try to import this image alright so this one has got imported the business central image and similarly let's also import the key server image that's required for this set up so let's take this one and this one has also got imported and hopefully with this in place uh, the deployment should have got started so let's go to the deployment configs and see what's going on there all right so this config has started already and let's go to the pods and we can see that the creation of the business central as well as the key server is going on I think um, the business central um, is, is already ready sorry not yet ready still the containers are not ready and and the same is the case with key server as well it's still getting created so let's wait for a few minutes for it to fully get created 
All right, now we can see that both the key server as well as the business central pods are up and running and they are in ready state. So this completes the installation of both these um, components, the key server as well as the business central. Now there is another way also by which we can create uh, more key apps. So let's go back to install operators and uh, the key app. So uh, in this in this installation, we had actually used the installer wizard that's there as a part of the operator. Uh, but uh, as a next step, what we would be doing is to directly use the custom resource definitions, and we will also be creating a key app with persistence as well for the key server. Uh, we would be using the Postgres uh, database as the backing store for the key server, and we will see how we can do that using the custom resource definitions. So let's get started once again by clicking on the create key app. And in here you can see the, the default uh, definition and what we can be uh, what can be done here in order to create a persistence packed key server instances we can directly start uh, referring to some of the standard Customer resource definitions that's available in this GitHub repository, uh, key group, key cloud operator, and let's say let's pick up the one for Postgres, and this is the resource definition. So let's pick this up and make some changes in our setup. So let me put this as the same, uh, but we need only one deployment here, and the environment that we are looking for is. Uh, the RHPAM authoring environment so let's change that to authoring and for this demonstration purposes we don't need 30 gigs so I'm just reducing it to 3 gigs and that is it with this in place let's go ahead and create the ski app and it's getting provisioned as we can see here and let's go back to pods let's see what's going on here and we can see that it's getting initialized the required set of pods are getting initialized and it will also be initializing a postgres database pod uh, which we can see from from this one so this is the postgres database pod and similarly we also have the business automation sorry the business central pod as well as the key server pod coming up so this is the key server this is the uh, business central pod still trying to come up so we will give it few minutes and uh, then we can see that these pods will also be in running state and now we can see that all these pods are in running state so with that if we go to the routes we should be seeing that we will have two instances of uh, business central uh, the one that we created initially using the installer wizard and the other one which we had created using the customer resource definition that we had provided manually so so this shows that so let's just try to open that up so this is the one that was created earlier using the installer wizard so let's accept again the security warnings and here we go so we have the business central installed using the installer wizard and we also have the other instance which was created using customer resource definition that we had provided let's accept the security warning once again and here we go we have this instance as well up and running all right now an important uh, another important um, aspect that I would like to highlight here is that when we had created the operator uh, it has automatically created different sets of resources behind the scenes uh, some of the resources uh, that are of prime importance for us to understand how um, the creation of these different components using the key app happens behind the scenes 
is specifically the config maps that we can see here. Uh, for instance, let's pick up one of the config maps, uh, which is key configs and the version number followed by ENVs. So it, this one shows the different configurations that we have as a part of this operator for different types of environments like authoring HA uh, is, is this is this a different this is the specific set of configuration that it would be using for that and if we scroll down um, we would see similar set of configurations uh, that are available for other types of environments for example we have RHTM authoring so the first one was for HA and this is non HA and we also have production immutable for decision manager and similarly we will also be having um, the other um, configurations for instance let's pick up one of them um, for instance the process automation manager authoring one here and going back to the config maps uh, we will also be having other types of uh, configurations for example the database related configurations uh, that is used by the operator can be found here so this is the yaml that is for external databases so in in this particular case um, the the database is has to reside outside the openshift cluster so in that case you can the operator will be using this particular configuration uh, whereas in our case when we had used the Postgres database so we have uh, a specific configuration for that uh, in a config map uh, that's available here and so on so similarly there are a few more configuration maps um, that are there for each version of the key config um, the each version of the key servers so this one is the 760 and uh, so here we have the JMS related configurations uh, which would be used when we would when we use the specific HA configurations and so on. So this completes the recording and uh, thanks for watching.